Welcome to The Shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera. And today we are going to be learning how to pack a bike in a cardboard bike box. For this task, you will need Allen keys, center lock rotor removal tool, if you have center lock rotors, brake shims, scissors, packing tape, obviously a box, and probably some extra, you know, this kind of stuff, packy things, and a bicycle. This is Lily. She is also gonna be learning about packing bikes. What do you say, Lil? Nah, <laughs> she's like, I hate you. You might be going on a trip and wanting to take your bike with you on the airplane, or you might be shipping your bike, or in this case, we are actually selling this bike, so we are packing it up and shipping it out. When we fly with our bikes, we typically use a bike-specific bike box. It's actually right down here at the moment. However, we have flown with our bikes in cardboard boxes many, many times, and it's a great solution for someone who doesn't travel with a bike all the time. Your bike will be just as safe in a cardboard box as it is in a soft case bike box. So if you don't want to invest the money in a bike travel bag, cardboard box has got you covered. Benefits of a cardboard box over a specific bike box is they are cheap or free. They're easy to find pretty much anywhere. You can dispose of them when you get to your destinations. So you don't have to store a bike bag. And that was it. That was all. <laughs> and nothing. We like our travel cases, like, but we also... Well, they have wheels yeah. and like yeah. prote extra protection. Sure. Like there's all sorts there's of There's nice definitely things. benefits, but they're also very expensive. So for today, we're obviously doing a cardboard box because we're not getting it back. We're selling the bike. So we decided to put the bike in the stand just to make it a little bit easier. It's not necessary. First thing we're gonna do is take the pedals off. If you're doing this on the ground, you especially wanna do that first because once you take your wheels off, it's really annoying to get pedals off. All right, we're gonna show you our trick for getting pedals off correctly on the first try every time. Even That's if a they're big stuck. promise, even if they're stuck. Okay, so we're in the stand so we can put our crank arm all the way down. If you're on the ground, just to have room, you probably wanna be at about 45 degrees. Then you're gonna put your pedal wrench in. You wanna point towards the back of the bike. And then you're gonna push down. And if it's stuck like that, guess what? Great news, you can step on it, which is actually... Boom. Those have been on there for a while. Yep. But see, it still worked. And the brilliant part of this trick is that it's exactly the same on both sides. Like, if you're like me, I spent the first 10 years that I rode bikes just like trying every which direction, which is fine when you're putting your pedals on. It's not really fine when you're taking them off when they're that hard, right? Because you don't, you can't tell and you might be tightening it more. Yeah, at which point then they're really stuck or you strip the crank and that's no good. The non-drive side is reverse threaded. That just confuses the living daylights out of people, but. So crank arm is straight down, and then Allen key is towards the back of the bike, and you just push that straight down. That one wasn't as stuck for whatever reason. Anyway, very easy. You do not want to do what we've seen people do on the internet. If you have it like this, and you're pushing up... You either punch the frame or the chain ring, and yeah. it's with not With this, good. you would probably punch the frame. It wouldn't be too bad, but with a shorter Allen key... Or a pedal I like wrench. I've seen people cut themselves so badly on this. Anyway... That's our sermon today on pedals. Do we want to just share the trick for how to remember how to put them on? Because we might as well. It's really easy. You just spin the pedal in the same direction that your wheels spin. See the wheel goes like that? On this side, it goes like that. On this side, it goes like that. I've also heard people say towards the front of the bike, but that can get confusing depending on like where you're holding your Allen key. So spin in the direction that your wheels are spinning. Always, works every time. And if you start putting a pedal in and that doesn't work, try it on the other side. Right, yeah, because they're <laughs> threaded differently. Yeah. And some lot... people can tell by looking, but I've never been one of those people. Yeah. Some can... say, some but say. these do not. But see, that makes it really easy. If you know that you're spinning in the same direction as your wheels, you find out really quickly that you're going the wrong way. 
you mean the wrong one. The wrong pedal. Right, yeah. right way, yeah. wrong one. If you're confident in one of your variables, yeah. <laughs> it's easier. It's when you don't know if you have the right pedal or if you're going the right direction that you might mess up and like screw up your threads. So, okay, back to the task at hand. We have our pedals off. In this case, we are not shipping the pedals with the bike. So we're just gonna put them aside. If you were going to ship the pedals with the bike, what would you do with them? Well, I think it depends what you have to work with, but you might get a little box for like the pedals and other small items, or just wrap them up in a little bit of this and probably tape them onto the frame or something. Well, you don't wanna do that because then you're gonna scratch up the frame. And they're wrapped up in this. Oh, and I gotcha. I'm just saying so it's not floating around in the yeah. bag. The other thing that we have done that really helps, especially if you have pedal washers, which we don't on this bike, is zip tie the pedal washers to the pedals and the pedals to each other, because then you can't lose any of the small pieces. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is pull the wheels off. At this point, it doesn't really matter what order you do things in, so we're gonna do it my way. My way, or the highway. All right, we're gonna put, this is important, we're gonna put the through axle back in, and then we're gonna important. tighten it. But not too much. <laughs> Is that okay? I think that's okay. We're gonna pull the rotors off, but first I wanna tell an embarrassing story, because everyone loves an embarrassing story. It was a very similar set of wheels to these that when they first came out, I had pre-production versions, which had different ones of these little hubcaps. And we were coming back from racing in New Zealand, and I didn't secure, I keep calling them hubcaps, they're not hubcaps, what are they called? End caps. End caps. I didn't secure the end caps, and they fell out of a hole in my bike box. On the airplane. On the, well, somewhere. Or in the yeah, airport somewhere or something. in transit, and that was a pre-production version. They did not exist. It was bad news. I couldn't get a new end cap. My wheel wouldn't turn. It was like a total nightmare. Basically, the moral of this particular part of the story is to secure all of your small parts. Uh, you probably want to shift into the hardest gear first. Sure. Make your life a little easier. I should have done that with the pedals are still on, but it doesn't really matter. I like to put the axles down over here and Mackie hates it because it's... Well, they look cool. like all the other things on the shelf and then they disappear and then we never see them again. I'm being good today, so we're going to do the same thing with the rear through axle that we did with the front, which is put it back in. And like he said earlier, don't tighten it too tight. So we're gonna put in our brake shims before we get too far ahead of ourselves. In you go. There it is. Oh, and look who came back to visit. Hi, Lils. Hi. If you pull your brake lever while you do not have a brake rotor in there, the pistons go out and like don't come back, right? It's not good. It, it requires resetting and it's a pain. And it's very easy for brake levers to get pulled in transit. Yes. So Shims are a must. They're also pretty cheap. If you don't have brake shims, you can just use a piece of cardboard. Just it's true, but I also think if you're traveling with your bike, you should just get some brake shims. Oh, yeah. If you're if selling you're... it or something, maybe do cardboard, yeah. but if you're traveling if with you're it. Doing... All right, we're gonna pull off our rotors very carefully. And then put the lock rings back on so that they can't get lost once again. <laughs> There it goes. And on this front wheel, just because I had that bad experience with the end caps on these kinds of wheels, I'm gonna go ahead and do some zip tie magic. Are you kidding me? Come on, baby. Oh, I made it go too far. Okay. Okay, just don't watch this. This is embarrassing. <laughs> I don't know why I'm having such a hard time. I've never used a zip tie before <laughs> in my life. <laughs> okay, okay. Look at the zip ties and just make sure the insides are on the inside of all of them. That's not going anywhere, if that's what you mean by something is wrong. Yeah, it's upside down. Okay. <laughs> it was going somewhere. Okay, okay. Okay, wait, no, wait, wait, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Will you stop? I'm sorry. <laughs> You're just acting like you've never used a zip tie before in your life. That's, I'm under pressure and I'm feeling judged. I'm not judging you. It's like, haven't you ever used a zip tie before? <laughs> there, I didn't do half bad. No, it was great. So we're gonna use this part of a box to make a quick rotor holder majig. 
what is the purpose of the rotor holder majig? You don't want them to scratch other things and you don't want them to bend, which that's why, that's the primary reason why you take them off the wheels. Cause you could probably get away with leaving them on the wheels. It's just a bummer when you get there and your rotor's all bent. You just make a little rotor sandwich and you grab some of this stuff. And you tape up your rotor sandwich. Things I've apparently never used in my life. Packing tape and zip ties. <laughs> okay, pause, pause, sorry. Can we make this so that it actually holds the rotors? I'm gonna tape on the other side. No, we need to like squeeze this together. I'm sorry I don't have 12 hands. <laughs> okay, that's much better. You squeeze the ends, apparently. Okay, we've never gone wrong with the little rotor cardboard sandwich situation. So we're gonna put this here. We're gonna not forget to put it in the box later. And then, next, we are going to take off the derailleur and wrap it up. So we don't actually fully detach the derailleur. Well, we do, that's not true. We fully detach the derailleur. Ah, that's not right. Please hold. We detach the derailleur, but we don't break the chain because that's just a pain in the butt. Wow, everything on this bike is on there. Or take off the uh, cable, obviously, because you don't want yeah. to put a whole new cable on. Do you zip tie that bolt generally, or do you just wrap no, it? No, so this bolt doesn't, it can't come out. Oh. Next you want to get some bubble wrap or foam or whatever you have. We happen to have a, just a lot of packing material in our lives. Essentially, you just wrap this up. Wrap it up, and then pop it in here, and then tape it on. Honestly, all of these tests are better with a buddy, but Sometimes your buddy has one broken hand and a camera in the other hand. Again, this doesn't have to be beautiful. It just has to be padded. I actually am not even sure I need to tape anything else there. Basically, you just don't want your chain to scratch everything. You're not really protecting your chain. You're protecting other things from your chain. Basically, the moral story is protect your derailleur. Make sure your chain isn't hitting the frame. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, put the bike in the box. It's exciting part. Obviously these chain rings are really sharp and like can cut through cardboard, which is not what you want. So we're gonna go ahead and just put this there and then I'm just gonna set it down like that. And then obviously we're gonna have to take out the handlebars, but we're gonna put the bike in first. This stage I'm going to grab a five mil and slam the seat. As you can see, Mackie has his seat height marked. This also is not gonna be his bike again, so it doesn't matter, but if it is yours, mark your seat height or just use your dropper post if you're doing a mountain bike. That usually gives you enough. However, <laughs> we did once have TSA trigger the dropper post lever and then they didn't know how to like put the seat back down <laughs> and my bike showed up with like the seat sticking out of the bag. They like left it unzipped. It was a bike case. On reflection, maybe if you're like trying to be as safe as possible, like put your seat down. And then our last like significant task here is to take up the handlebars. And we do this in the box because otherwise then you have to like carry the bike over with the fork like not attached and it's just like not very fun for anyone. If you have spacers that are above and below the uh, the stem, like this, for example, what you wanna do is just take a picture so that when you get to your destination, you know how many spacers go above and below it. And then you wanna put your top cap back on because otherwise these are gonna go all over the place and that's not what you want. Likewise, I'm gonna tighten these a little bit. I mean. I don't know if that's really necessary. Like you don't want to clamp them, obviously, but you want to make sure that they don't fall out because I don't know if you guys are picking up what I'm putting down here, but the only way you can go severely wrong here is to have things fall out and disappear. Now we're just gonna wrap these puppies in bubble wrap. And we're in. Mountain bike bars are definitely easier to deal with, but where there's a will, there's a way. So right now I'm gonna add a little bit more padding before we get the wheels in, just cause it's a little easier to see what's going on. And I wanna make sure that everywhere that's like touching the box has some 
padding, like just brake rotors kind of towards the back of the box there. Caliper. Caliper, yep. Things are always gonna change when you put the bike in, so no matter how well you have it wrapped up beforehand, I think it's good to like add stuff at this stage. Got a piece of cardboard here to protect our bike from the wheels. I'm gonna slide that in, and then just sort of the way this worked out, we're gonna do both wheels on one side. Sometimes you do a wheel on each side, at which point you will need two pieces of cardboard. This is, I feel like, often where things get interesting. You're like, this is going so well. And then you put the wheels in and you're like, this is no longer going so well. I can see today being one of those days. Totally. I'd also let a little air out of the tires. They don't need to be flat. They just need to be not super high pressure. Yeah, so they don't explode. This is more important, I feel like, for mountain bike tires, because like if you have 29 inch mountain bike tires, you're not going to get them oh, in just any box. Fit. Yeah, for road tires, it matters because of the pressure. For mountain bike tires, it matters so that they will fit. All right, wheel sandwich coming right up. Everything's a sandwich today. You might feel like you're forcing it a little bit, but it'll be fine. We really need to pad that though. You have to be yeah. careful of digging holes in the box like I kind of did there. If you don't have one of these, just do Basically cardboard. put something to protect the wheel. Okay, so we've got our two wheels. This handlebar is super well protected, so it's not a big deal that that's on there and then I'm gonna put some more padding between the cassette, but there's also this whole piece of cardboard, but it's a little towards the edge, so I'm gonna add some extra in there just to be like on the extra safe side. And this is good because it's all pretty tight. Like things won't scratch if they can't move. Definitely almost forgot the rotors. <laughs> Don't forget the rotors. We have some extra packing, so I figure we'll make it somebody else's problem. <laughs> Nah, I feel like you can't, I mean, actually that's not true. You can totally have too much, but we're not, we're not to too much yet. Final step is to close your box, apply liberal amounts of packing tape and get it in the mail. This is how to pack a bike into a cardboard box in one minute. Start by removing the pedals from your bike. Next, remove the wheels and insert the brake shims. Make sure to reinstall the through axles in your fork and rear triangle so they don't get lost. Now remove the rotors from the wheels, reattach the lock rings or rotor bolts and create a rotor protector with cardboard and tape. If your wheels have removable end caps, run a zip tie through the hubs to keep them attached. Now remove the derailleur and carefully wrap it in protective material. Wrap your chain as well to keep it from scratching the chainstay. Place foam or cardboard on the bottom of the chain ring, then place the bike in the box. Lower or remove the seat post, then remove the stem and handlebars. If you have spacers above and below the stem, take a photo so you remember which ones go where. Reinstall the top cap and tighten the stem bolts so they don't fall out during transit. Next, wrap the bars and stem in bubble wrap and carefully slide them into the box, making sure that any spots that touch the frame are protected. Place a piece of cardboard next to the frame, then carefully insert the wheels. Make sure to protect the outer end cap of the outside wheel to keep it from punching a hole through the box. Now double check that every contact point between the box, wheels, frame, and handlebars are well padded and don't forget your rotors. Mm -hmm.